The reason why we feel we're lacking in our lives is because it's a spiritual disease. We're not drinking, we're not eating, we're not sustaining ourselves from the Torah. We feel we're lacking because we're lacking chokhmah, we're lacking wisdom. Episode number 103. Welcome to the Torah Podcast. Lessons from authentic Judaism. Get the tools and inspiration you need for personal growth. Hosted by Rabbi Mitterhoff. Shalom, this is Eliyahu Mitterhoff with this week's Torah Podcast. This week we'll be covering Perkyavos, Ethics of Our Fathers, Chapter 1, the 4th Mishnah. How to get what you're missing, quenching your thirst. We're going to have a powerful parable about the sick beggar, a great story about the Chida, and peace in your home, women's emotions in silence. And now, Ethics of the Fathers, the fundamentals of Jewish faith and character development. So the fourth Mishnah in Perkyavos reads like this, Yosef ben Yozir, Ish Sereda, Yosef ben Yochanan, Ish Yushalayim, Ki Bomeham, they received from them, Yosef ben Yozir, Ish Sereda, he said, let your house be a gathering place for the wise, for the Chachamim. Sit in the dust of their feet and drink their words with thirst. So the Mish is telling us three things. First of all, it's telling us we should make our house a place where people can sit and learn. Second of all, when the Chachamim do come and we have guests that are Chachamim, Tamari Chachamim, Torah scholars, we should sit at the dust of their feet. Thirdly, it's coming to tell us that we should drink their words with thirst. So we're going to explain what the Mephorshim, what the different commentaries say on these things. We'll start with Rashi. Rashi says, what does it mean we should make our house a base of Ar-Chachamim? We should make our house a place of learning. So if we have Chavrusas, if we have Rebbe's, and they come to our house, it's a very big thing. And what does it mean that we should sit at the dust of their feet? It means that we should serve them. It's a very big Indian to serve your Rebbe, to help a person who's a Tamachachim, and that's how you're going to learn the most from them. And the third thing is, you should drink their words with thirst, Rashi explains. Adam shuhu sava but sama. Not like a person who is satisfied. We have to be thirsty for Ruchnius. If we're thirsty for spirituality, then we're going to gain something. If we're satisfied, we're not going to gain anything. And that's exactly what the Rabbeinu Yonah says. He brings the Mishle from 27.7. It says, A sated soul will trample on honeycomb, but a starving soul, even bitter things are sweet. If one feels filled from the words of the Torah and does not desire them, then even if he hears pearls of Torah wisdom, he hears the tremendous chedushim, he hears unbelievable things, still he'll tramp on them because he's just not interested. On the other hand, if a person is hungry for words of Torah and longs to hear them, he'll be happy with them and he'll find them sweet, even if they have no explanation, just hearing the words of Torah itself. Because he heard them from the teacher, and he knows they're true. And even though they may be simple, but he's going to get tremendous pleasure from them. So the factor of what we gain from learning Torah, being connected to Torah, all has to do with our interest. If we're interested, we're going to gain more. And if we're less interested, we're going to gain much less. And the Rabbeinu Baki explains what does it mean that we should make our house a place of the Chachamim? He said, just like the base of Migdash, this is unbelievable. It's like the same thing as the Ohel Moed, the Mishkan. Why? Shehu Muzman, the Sharis Shechina. Just like the Mishkan was ready to receive the Divine Presence, Kenyim Beisek Muzman Lechachamim. So your house should be ready to receive the Divine Presence. If we make our houses ready, then maybe we'll bring some spirituality into our house. And he further explains what does it mean we should drink in their words? Because the Torah is like water. Kaka Torah. Mashiv is nefesh. Shneamar, Torah is Hashem. Tamima, Mashiva's Nefesh. The Torah satisfies a spiritual thirst within inside of a person. Just like when a person is very thirsty and he drinks, he feels the water is sweet. So too, if a person works in learning, he spends hours in the base midrash, it becomes sweeter and sweeter. The Torah becomes sweet to him because the more thirsty he becomes, the more sweet the Torah is. It's a sweetness to the soul. It's the thirst of our soul. If we're in contact with the thirst of our soul, then the Torah is very sweet to us. That was Rabbeinu Bachia. 
Now, the Avos de Rabbi Nassim explains that when you bring a Torah scarlet into your house, you get to get a blessing. Where do we know that from? We know it from Yaakov, Vino, and Lavan. When Yaakov connected up with Lavan, Lavan was blessed. We also know it by Yosef and Potiphar. When Yosef came into Potiphar's house, his house became blessed. So it's a very good thing to bring Torah scholars into your house because your house will become blessed. And the Bartanur explains, She'iyev shar shalot ta'umun mahem eze devar chachma. If you hang around with Chachamim, you will become wise yourself. Masha, what is this comparable to? It's comparable to someone who goes into a perfume shop. And even though he doesn't buy anything from the perfume shop, but when he comes out, he smells good. In other words, just hanging around with wise people makes a person wise. So it's so important to spend some time in the Beis Midrash, to spend some time with Tamar Chachamim, and you yourself will become wise just hanging around with such people. And the Maharal explains that's exactly why you need to invite Chachamim to your house, because your house also has to become wise. Not just the father, but the mother and the children. It brings your Chemayim into the house. If you bring important people, big rabbis into your house, it's going to have a big effect on your house. The Maharal also explains on a spiritual level. He wants to say, The house is like the physical part of a person. And what should come into his house? Chochmah. A person should have seichel. He should bring wisdom through his mind into his body. Ki seichel nivdom adam. Really, the seichel, the intelligence, is separate from his man's body. Rak yesh adam kashur ima seichel. Ubeze adam misabek b'seichel. But a man should cling to his seichel and uplift himself. Should have wisdom inside of his body. On the other hand, his body shouldn't take over his seichel. So really, you should be inviting wisdom into your house. Now listen to this, it's a tremendous chiddush. She says, U'b'seichel yashlim adam. An intelligence completes man. He makes man complete. L'fikak yishteh adam b'sem devareim. Therefore, we should drink with desire to get intelligence, because intelligence is going to fill us up with what we're missing. We're not shalem, we're not complete. How do we complete ourselves? With intelligence, with wisdom. Because a person who doesn't drink from the waters of intelligence, he's incomplete. A person should drink from the intelligence in order to fulfill his lackings. Because all the time that a man is missing something, he doesn't feel good. This is the secret on how to feel good. If you fill yourself with wisdom, you'll start to feel good because you'll start to feel shalem, you'll start to feel complete. We know if you're just hanging around for hours watching TV, doing who knows what, wasting your time. A person, a normal human being, a healthy human being wants to understand. And a person who's not filling himself up with something intelligent, but this happens to be real intelligence. Here we're talking about the truth. If a person is not filling himself up with the truth, he's going to feel chaser. He's going to feel lacking in our lives. And this Perkyavus is telling us that the reason why we feel that we're missing something is because we're missing missing chachma, we're missing wisdom. If we would fill ourselves with more wisdom, we'd feel good, we'd feel fulfilled, we'd feel more satisfied with our lives. And according to the Maharal, this is what this Perkyavos is teaching us. Make your house a place of chachma, invite the chachamim, serve them, and drink from their words. Even just opening Gemara, I saw one of them before she say, well, even just opening Gemara, you've already made your house a place of the Chachamim, and you're drinking from their words because you're fulfilling yourself with the wisdom. This is the thing that's going to make a person happy. Now, the Ruach HaChaim adds another dimension to this. Now that you've brought Torah into your house and you want to drink from their words, there's another level. He wants to say it like this. Vehina halima nikrum Learning is called the war. The war of Torah. It's forbidden for a Talmud, a student, to accept his Rebbe's words at point blank if he has difficulties with them. Sometimes the Talmud is right. 
So what is this Perkyav was telling us? He says, Make your house a place of the Chachamim. He should like be in a war, a situation of a war. It's a war of a mitzvah. We fight against the words of Chachamim HaKadoshim. Even though the Chachamim are in heaven already. They will read the Gemara, but when we fight in the Gemara, it's called Milchamas Hashem, a war for the sake of God. And this is the big Kiddush. We've been given permission to fight them and to understand them and to answer their difficulties. This is such a beautiful thing. The Torah itself, we're not afraid. Other religions are afraid to dig too deep into the religion because they might find trouble. No, if we don't understand something, it's a mitzvah for us. And it's an avera not to do it. It's a mitzvah to fight. I don't understand. Lamdenu Rabbeinu, Rebbe, teach me. What are you saying? It doesn't make any sense to me. And that's the real learning. The real learning that brings holiness into the house is the learning of Melchama of strengthening yourself to see the truth, to know the truth, to want to know the truth. Because we're not afraid. It's lahavdil. It's like one of those commercials where they have a great product, so they take out a baseball bat to smash the thing, and you see the thing stands. The same thing with the Torah. We're not scared to ask questions of the Torah. We're not scared at all. My Rebbe used to say to me, if it doesn't make sense, it's nonsense. I don't care who said it. It doesn't matter if Atana said it, if Moshe Rabbeinu said it. What does that mean? It means if it doesn't make sense to you, it's nonsense. Not that it's nonsense. Of course it's true, but we're not afraid. We're not afraid. We push forward. We have a drive and a desire and a thirst that we want to understand what the Torah says. And the more you work on this level, the more beauty you see in the Torah. Because really the reason we don't understand is because we're missing. That's what Chazal says. If the Torah seems empty, it's your emptiness. <laughs> we're the ones that are empty, not the Torah is empty. People read something, they see contradictions in the Torah, and they say, they give up, they throw up their hands, they say, it must be this Torah is not right. Ah, it was just written by rabbis. It was just written by human beings. No, that's not the approach. You have to push forward. You have to have a thirst and a drive to understand if you see a kash, if you see a difficulty, ask the difficulty. Because there's an answer at the end of the day day there's going to be an answer and the more you push like this the more you learn like this the more you grow because the problem is that we're not truthful we're missing we're lacking so the more we push on the tour the more juice that's going to come out the more truth that's going to come out the more we're going to grow i just want to end this off with the leif simch who says like this he says, what does it mean that you should make your house a place of the Chachamim? He says, the focal point of a Jew's life is his true home. His true home is the base Midrash. Which house? Which house do you live in? Which house should a man live in? A man's real house is the base Midrash, is the place of learning, where he could spend hours and hours in thinking and learning and working and understanding more and more. That's what it means to make your house a place of Chachamim. In other words, you should be in the place that should be your house that's where you should live ah it's true you have to go home you have to take care of your kids and your wife and you have to do all these things it's true but your main purpose and focus in life is to drink from the words of the chachamim and right now we're sitting before shavuos this is the time now we have to push forward to try to really accept the torah macabre the torah desire the torah to see and understand that within it is everything and that's where our blessing will come from and that's where our fulfillment will come from and the reason why we feel we're lacking our lives is because it's a spiritual disease we're not drinking we're not eating we're not sustaining ourselves from the Torah we feel we're lacking because we're lacking chokhmah we're lacking wisdom and if we would macabre the Torah we'll be totally fulfilled and have better lives and more happiness and more blessing in our lives here is a powerful parable So in Parshas Naso, there's a passage that says like this, They shall confess the sins which they committed. It's talking about Vidui. So he wants to bring a mushal. One time there was two poor people and they were going from city to city to collect money. One of the poor persons was healthy, another person was sick. So the healthy person said, listen, 
Don't tell anybody you're sick. They're not going to invite us into our house. So we'll keep it hidden. So that's exactly what they did. The sick man didn't say a word about being sick when he came into a person's house. What happened? One time they came to this big house. They knock on the door and the man opens the door. They see that he's asking for money. So they say, listen, you know what? I'll give you money. But you know what else? I'm a doctor. And if you're, either of you are sick, well, then I'll be able to heal you for free. So the sick man said, no, no, we're both healthy. We're healthy like oxen. No problem. So then his friend bumped him. He said, listen, this is not the time to pretend you're healthy. This is a doctor. He's willing to help you. You should tell him each and every single pride, every detail of what hurts you. And maybe you'll get healed by this doctor. So that was the mashal. What's the nimshal? The nimshal is vidui. It's true. Man is filled with many sins. And when it comes to Ben Adam the Chaver, you're not supposed to tell your friends your sins. You're not supposed to expose your sins to other people. But when you come in front of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, of course you should say Vidui. Of course you should have Harata and regret each and every particular sin. Because that's the way you'll become healed. It's time for Great Stories About Great Rabbis. This is an unbelievable story about the Chida. It was written in Shem Gadolim Achadash. So one time a man came to the base din of the Chida, to the court of the Chida, and he said, listen, my wife was secluded with another man. I think she cheated on me. So the Chida said to him, the Torah said you should divorce her. It happened to be in that base din that the other two judges were a relative of this lady, and they were afraid it's going to go out a very bad name on this lady that she's getting a divorce because she cheated on her husband. So they said to the Chida, they said, listen, we don't understand. How can you tell him to divorce his wife? There's no witnesses here. Elia, tell me you have some kind of prophecy. The Torah is not in heaven. Ah, you'll tell me you have some kind of divine inspiration that she's wrong. But we don't have a Kohen or a prophet nowadays. So why should this man divorce his wife? So again, the Chida stood up and told the man, you should divorce his wife. So when the other judges saw that the Chida was holding his ground, afterwards they went to the relatives of this lady, who happened to be prominent members of the community. And a major disruption broke out. What's going on? What is the Chida doing? Why does this woman have to get a divorce? And there's a whole argument in the community. So when the Chida heard that there's a whole dispute going on, he invited this woman that she has to come up to his study room. What did he do? He opened up his Sefer Torah. And he started to read the portion of this week's Parsha, of a Sotem, Parsha's Nasa. And he starts to read it out loud. If you have not strayed, and it continues, and the woman starts to walk out the door, and then he reads the part, but if you have strayed, all of a sudden, just as the woman walks on the first stair, her face turns green, her eyes bulge, just like the description that's written in Sota. This is exactly what happens if a woman drinks the May Sota that erased Hashem's name that the Torah uses to find out if a woman cheated on her husband. And if she's willing to go so far to erase Hashem's name and drink the water, so that's the punishment that she gets when she dies. So the woman who's having all these reactions, she started to scream. So people heard about it. They came running up. They said, remove this woman, and then she passed away. So they say that because of this incident, they saw what a tremendous man the Chida was. And what happened? The wealthy people of the city covered those stairs with gold in remembrance of this great miracle that happened to the Chida. Learn to give, love, and communicate. This is Peace in Your Home. So Moshe Aaron Stern speaks about women's emotions. He says women are easily brought to tears and they can cry over very small things. The Kehilas Yaakov explains why is that true. Because a woman's whole support and reliance is on her husband. And therefore, if a husband doesn't treat her properly, it's like her whole world falls apart. She feels injured and hurt. And therefore, she starts to cry. So a husband should be very careful not to hurt his wife. So one of the ways to do that, he brings down his silence. Like the Perky Yavos says, I have never found anything better for the body than silence. So he asks, why the body? So he tells a story. One time a woman came to him and says, I killed my husband in cold blood. 
He was shocked. He says, listen, you look like a very sneeze lady. I understand how you can say such a thing. She said, no one time we got in an argument, I started to scream, I started to yell, and my husband died from a stroke. He says, since that day, I have not been able to recover. And this was all because of the woman's anger. So too, a man has to be very careful to control his anger. And a wife also has to control their anger. The Gemara in Chulin quotes the Pasuk from Tehillim, Tola Eretz our Blima. The whole world hangs in a void. And there it explains that someone who shuts his mouth when he's been angered, it's like he's holding up the whole world because of that silence the world stands. So if a fight breaks out, what do you do? So he says, if you say words, it's like pouring fuel on the fire. It's better to go for a walk, to separate, to go to sleep. Anything but talking. Stop talking. If there's anger, you have to stop talking. You have to keep silent. That brings the Gemara from Rosh Hashanah. Anyone is Mavir Amir Asav, anyone who overcomes his own character, Hashem will Mavir Amir Asav. So Hashem will also not judge him in the same way, because it's Mita Kinegin Mita. Just like it's true, you should have got angry, and you had a good reason to get angry. And if you don't get angry, Mita Kinegin Mita, Hashem will not get angry at you when he has a good reason to be angry at you. But since you were not angry, so too Hashem will not get angry. I like the Perky Yavo says, who is strong? The one who overcomes his evil inclination. And the Chatham Sofer says, a strong person knows how to be quiet. A weak person, as soon as he gets angry, that's it. He has to scream and yell. But a strong person can hold it in. That's a sign of strength. And one time, somebody came to the Chatham and he said, listen, I can't take it anymore. I have no strength to be quiet anymore. My wife is driving me crazy. So the Chazanish said to him, wow, that's a big Kiddush. To say that a person can get tired just from keeping quiet? That's simply not true. <laughs> All you have to do is shut your mouth. It's not a big deal. Okay, that's it for this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share it with your friends and please leave comments. Thank you for listening. To get more enthusiasm for your Judaism, become a free member at globalyeshiva.com.